Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to another financial modeling webinar series brought to you by D. Brown Consulting. Today we're going to be talking about scenario analysis for financial modeling. How can you master building them? Right? So you're going to master scenario analysis for financial modeling. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Our webinars are sponsored by dbrownconsulting.net and we do them every third Thursday of the month from 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Central African time. Right, our sponsors are again dbrown consulting. We also have officetrainginghub.com sponsoring and officetrainginghub.com delivers online content, online training on financial modeling, Power BI, Excel and Office 365 and it has lots of certified training from the CPD certification service. So let's jump right in. And your presenter for today, my name is David Brown. I'm the managing partner of D. Brown Consulting, and I'm also an international consultant to the World Bank. I do quite a bit of modeling stuff for the World Bank as well. And I'm a Microsoft MVP on the, the data platform. You can reach me on Twitter at dbrownanalyst. You can also reach me on YouTube, watch some of my videos on YouTube at bit.ly slash dbrownvideos. You can check me out on LinkedIn and also on the Office Training Hub platform where I have some recorded courses. You can also check us out at dbrownconsulting.net. All right, so we'll see you guys online. So let's jump straight into it. So what are we talking about? How do you incorporate a financial model scenario tool or scenario financial modeling tool for scenario analysis into a completed model? So here we're looking at a completed model. So the completed model has your inputs. So these are your typical inputs. These are just uh, general P&L assumptions, balance sheet assumptions, financing assumptions, typical input, right, for a detailed and good financial model with all the styles and everything. You have a calculation sheet. So a calculation sheet, all the various calculations that make up um, those figures or the schedules, different schedules of calculations. You have your property plants and machinery, retain earnings, and all the numbers are all there. These calculations obviously feed into the financials. You have your P&L. So this is your typical profit and loss account. And these are your figures for profit and loss. You have your balance sheet. So this is your balance sheet. You can see it's reconciling to zero, so it's reconciled. You have your assets, equity, liabilities, and stuff. So typical balance sheet. This is our forecast period here. All right. Let me reduce it a bit so you see everything. All right. You can close this selection pane. All right. Then you have your cash flow. This is your cash flow statements, your cash flow from operations, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. And then analysis of change in cash. And yeah, so everything looks reasonable. Yeah. Then you have some other blanks here. So this is nice. So why would we want to kind of, what's the point of having a scenario in here? Well, the thing is, when you build a model, there's lots of uncertainty. So typically, when you want to build scenarios, when I say scenario, for take for example sales. See, sales currently... We're projecting that sales will grow at 10% flat for five years. Is that realistic? Well, is it going to is sales going to grow exactly at 10% for five years? Most likely not. It's extremely difficult to predict such things. So, wouldn't it be better to have various scenarios? So you have your maybe best case, worst case, likely case scenario, and then you can allow people to pick from those scenarios, right? So, so sales growth will obviously be a candidate for that because we can't really predict. Um, it's not it's something that is pretty difficult to predict. So this is a good candidate for having scenarios. Another candidate could even be cost of sales, right? Cost of sales, uh, historically, they seemed kind of flat. But what about if there's a big downturn or something, or maybe it costs lots more money to buy the raw materials that they need to do this production. So their cost of sales figures could go up, right? So this could be another candidate for uh, scenario analysis, right? And you have selling general and admin. So there's quite quite a few of these are good candidates for, I think these three are definitely good candidates for um, um, changes in um, scenarios, right? In scenarios, giving them different scenarios. Then you have dividend payout rates, also a good candidate. 
So we could say that all these figures are base figures, right? And then we need various other scenarios. There are various ways of, of building in scenarios, right? I'll show you two. I'm show you one common way, and then I'm going to show you a more versatile way. So the common way is to say, hey, okay, this, I'm just going to do scenarios for one item. Let's just say I'm going to do scenarios just for year-on-year uh, -year sales growth. Let me just reduce these columns for you. So I'm just going to do some scenarios for year-on-year -year sales growth. So I want to have three scenarios for sales growth. But I don't want to mess up my model. So I want to do it in a way that my model has no clue that I'm messing around with its inputs. So my model stays balanced, right? The key thing is typically best practice, build your scenario schedules before you build your model. Build everything. Your scenario structure is built. But, I mean, real life, things don't happen like that, right? So you have a completed model and someone says, hey, build in a scenario. So how many of you have had that uh, that issue where you have a completed model and then they want you to change the structure of the model. Uh, how do you, where do you start? Because yeah, your model is nice and correct. You don't want to mess it up. How many of you have had that issue? Type in the chat. Type in the chat. Tell me if you've had an issue where everything seems really nice, is working, and then someone says, hey, can I build something else and I need to see best case, worst case, likely case for everything. And you're like, but but uh, I don't want to mess up my model. So let me show you one method. It won't mess up your model. It works pretty nicely. Let's say we're going to do three scenarios for this. The technique is this. Build, insert your rows. I'm going to insert three rows, right? I'm inserting three rows, and I'm going to put my scenarios for sales growth in here. Sales growth scenarios in these three rows. Let's just say best case, for example. Best case, yeah, scenario for sales growth. Uh, no, let's let's say this should be let's be best. I'm just control D. That's what I just did here. Let's actually call this first one base case, right? Base case, base case, and then the next one let's call it worst case, worst case. Let's say worst, worst, worst case, and then the last one best case. No, let's say best case and worst case. That's good things for us. Base, best, and worst. Why not? Worst should be last, right? So once you type this in, you have to note something. This is what is plugged into your model. These these numbers are what is plugged into your model. Uh, how do I know that? I could click on this. You can come to my formula bar up here, and there's something called trace dependence. If you click on trace dependence, you see that what depends on this it shows a line. If I double click this line and double click what it shows, you will see that this revenue for year one depends on that percentage. If you look at the formula in the cell, see that formula? This is depends. So K previous sales multiplied by one plus input L11. What's input L11? Come to the input sheet. That's this input L11, right? So obviously, um, this is what plugs into your model. And we're not going to mess things up. We're going to leave it like that. We're just going to do some, we're going to build some other assumptions here. And then kind of trick the model into knowing, thinking that nothing has changed when something has changed. So first thing you do, list out your scenarios that you want for whatever line item it is you're working on. Then just put some scenarios there. So look at what I'm going to do. I'm just going to highlight this, copy, and I'm going to paste them here, right? So I've pasted all of this here. And then I'll put my values. I say, okay, this is my base case. My best case probably is 13% flat growth. Maybe we'll say 10%, 11%, then, I don't know, 9%, and then 9%, and then, yeah. So then my best case is 13%, 14%, 12%, 12%, uh, and maybe another 13.5. Uh, I'm, I'm just typing anything. Worst case is, oh, we just grew at 2%, 1%, 1%, and uh, maybe 3% and uh, 3%. Right. So what I've just done here is I've just entered some list of scenarios. Base case, best case, and worst case. But but this is not plugged into my model. Nothing depends on this. If I click on this and say formulas, what depends? Trace dependence. Nothing. The trace dependent command found no formulas that refer to the active cell. Perfect. Well, not perfect, but yeah. So how do we now make the whole model depend on, on this? Yeah? 
you can run all scenarios at the same time. You have to run one at a time. So the technique is this, and just take note of the technique. To plug this scenario into your model, there are two things you need to define. There are two things you need to define. You need to define a list and you need to define a switch. Two things you need to define, a list and a switch. Anytime you want to plug in scenarios into your model, define the list of scenarios and define a switch. The switch, what it will act on is that switch will switch between each of the scenarios. So define a list and a switch. So I highlight this and I'm going to call it a list. I'm going to give it a list. It's just going to call it L underscore, maybe SC for scenarios. L underscore SC, right? That's what I'm calling this. Why did I say L underscore? That's just my technique for telling myself that that's a list, right? It's like a naming convention. So L underscore is my way of saying, hey, this is a list. Then SC is just scenario, short for scenario. So L underscore SC is my list of scenarios. Then I need a switch. I need to be able to switch between any one of these. You have to designate a cell for that switch. Just designate a cell. Typically, in a full-blown model, I'll have an input sheet somewhere and I'll uh, what uh, ranges sheet and I'll put all my scenarios and switches and everything there. But I'm just going to designate this cell right here. So this cell right here is going to be my uh, designated switch. As I said, you need a list and a switch. I'm going to call this one my switch. So I'm going to go to, in fact, it's going to be an input. So I'm going to go to inputs and just put implement the input style input style so I like following the, those rules so this is my input style and this is going to be my switch so I'm going to call it S underscore SC you know this one I called it L underscore SC this I'm going to call it S underscore SC you can see something is already called that so SC S underscore SC which is fine right so I have my list and my switch so what has that done for us nothing for now but you'll see the magic very soon what you're going to do is, this my switch is going to switch between scenarios. I can type 1, which means that I'm scenario 1. I'm, I'm going to just do the general format. Shortcut is Ctrl Shift tilde. Tilde is the button to the left of 1 on your keyboard, if you want to learn that shortcut. Ctrl Shift 1 is two decimal places. Ctrl Shift tilde. All right. So if I put 1 here, it means I want to run the base case scenario. So what I want to do is run the base case scenario. So when I type 1 here, I want this to change to base case scenario. So I'm going to put a formula in here. So I'm going to kind of use this style. So I don't, I want, I don't, it's not going to be an input style anymore. So I'll just click on this. This is another trick. Click on home, click on the brush, paint brush. And I'm just going to brush this style over so that this is not an input anymore. It's just like a normal cell. Then I'm going to write a formula here that automatically looks at my switch and picks what the first item here if i had type 2 on this switch what i want this to pick is the second item here if i type 3 what i want this formula to pick is the third item so whatever i pick is going to be based on what is in this switch and the formula that does that is index and it's a very simple syntax once you've defined your list and defined your switch this is a trick you just say equals to index right highlight all the values you want to analyze so these are my values let me take this away so these are my values right these values these are these three is my list of values now those list of values you now put a comma and you type your switch you type your switch sc so it's s underscore sc so, so see the formula you just say equals to index you highlight your list of scenarios and you put a comma and you type your switch. The name of your switch is S underscore SC. Once you enter, you'll see that this is 2%. Why? Because this is the third set of scenarios. If I type 1, this is now what? 10%. If I type 2, this will now pick what? 13%. So I can drag this formula all the way right. Best practice, highlight, and then do Control R. Control R to copy right. All right? So that's it. So I've dragged right. And now this works fine. If I change this to 1, change this to 2, change this to 3. Right. So change it to 3. What I can do is, is worst case scenario. I want to know what scenario we are currently running in the model. So another trick, I'll just say equals to. I'm going to say equals to double quotes, which is parentheses here, or 
So scenario in use. I put a colon, put a space, I put a double quote. I can't spell use, so use, scenario in use. Space and double quote. And then I put an and sign and I say index tab list, which is my L scenarios, LS scenarios, comma switch. So every time you use the index, it's just basically equals to index list comma switch. Here we said equals to index this list, this three, comma switch. Same technique here. When I enter now, look at what happens. You have a nice definition that scenario in use is worst case. If I change this three to one, scenario in use is base case. Change it to two, change it to three. But this is nice. And if you check your model, your model is not broken. Everything is working. If I go to my balance sheet, it's still fine. Okay, you can look at the zero here. This is just some small rounding calculations, rounding. Okay, so it's nothing to be worried about at all. So if I come to my inputs, this changing of one, two, three really doesn't, it's not really professional. So once you've built your list and switch technique, right? I can even put this in a box, Control Shift 7. It's just a way of putting this in a box, right? Then I can actually use something called a combo box. I can use a tool that will list out the scenarios and I pick from the tool. I pick from the tool and the tool will type 1, 2, 3 for me here. So instead of me typing 1, 2, 3, I want something that has a list of all the scenarios. When I pick one of the scenarios, if I pick the first scenario, it will type 1. If I pick the second scenario, it will type 2. If I pick the third scenario, it will type 3. To get that, you need to have something called developer. You need this tab here, developer. Now, if you don't have this tab, you can go to file, you can go to options, then under options, you can pick a customized ribbon, and then down here to the right, you will see developer. Maybe it's not ticked. You make sure you tick it. So that's file, options, then you go to customize ribbon, then you pick developer and you say OK. Right? But I have developer. That's it up here. So I want to get the combo box, something called the combo box. That's going to help me automate this whole thing. Right? Now, what's the combo box? If you look at your tabs here, you have home all the way to view. What I always like to tell people is this. Everything to the right of view, everything you see to the right of view is not Excel. It's really an application that works with Excel. Everything to the right of view. This is an application. Add-ins are many applications. Data stream, all those are applications that work with Excel. So I'm going to go to developer. It's an application that works with Excel. I go to insert, this insert button here. See controls. I'm trying to create a control, right? So I go to insert. I have two sets of controls, form controls and ActiveX controls. ActiveX well, ActiveX works mostly uh, with uh, macros, right? But form controls work directly with Excel. I'm just going to click on the second one, click, and then I'm just going to drag and draw a form. So this is a form, this one, right? So this is a form, and this form, what do we do with it? We're going to now plug it into this model. How do you plug it in? This is not Excel, because if something is not in a cell, in Excel. It is not Excel. This is not in a cell in Excel. It's just floating, so it's not Excel. But to work with Excel, you must work with a cell. So for this to work with Excel, you're going to right-click it and go to Format Control. And under Format Control, you'll see your input range and your cell link. These are two key things. Input range, just take it that input range is your list of scenarios. Cell link is your switch. So your input range, you just highlight your list of scenarios, but really you shouldn't highlight. You should actually use the name. It's very important to use the name. Because if you don't use the name, you can only use this box in this sheet. But if you use the name, you can use this, this box or this combo box in all sheets. Anyway, so let's type the name. It's S, no, it was L underscore SC, if you remember. And this one is S is the switch, S underscore SC. So you need to remember the name, right? You need to remember the name. L underscore SC, S underscore SC. Input range is your list. Cell link is your switch. Just click OK. You're going to get some error messages. I have a spill because I'm using the new Excel. 
most people will have value error. So click out first. Once you create a combo, it always does that. Click out first to activate it, and then come here and you see the list of scenarios. Click it and click the first one. Works. Click the second one. It works. Click the third one. It works. Can you see it's typing in here? If I change this to two, it's going to also affect this. See? Perfect. So this is your first way of doing it and doing it in a completed model. I now have my scenarios here and it works fine, really nicely. No, not bad, not bad. I can right click this, make a copy, come to my PNL for example, come here and paste Control V. Now I have another version of the box here and I can change it here and you see it will affect all values. It's going to affect everything, right? As I'm changing it, it's affecting my model. And it's affecting my model, my balance sheet is still balancing fine. So that's how you plug a scenario tool into a completed model. But this is not what I want to show you. Uh, this is good, this is very good, uh, and it's taking half of our time. What I really want to show you is a scenario section entirely. So I'm just going to insert some rows here, right? And I'm going to create, I'll still leave that one I have here. I'm going to create a scenario tool, a scenario analysis tool or something like that, right? Scenario analysis tool, right? Scenario analysis tool is what I'm going to create. And what are we going to do with this tool? Well, we're going to create a tool that is interesting and versatile. We're going to choose those line items that give you the most variability, right? And we're going to now use that to build a scenario and sensitivity analysis tool. So how am I going to do that? Uh, let's start picking some line items. Let's say, um, yeah. So I pick, um, so let's say I pick even even sales growth. We've done sales already with these buttons. Let's just leave that. Let's pick cost of sales, SGNA. Let's just say I'm gonna pick cost of sales. Right? Uh, so I'm gonna pick cost of sales. I'm gonna pick S G and A. Right? So for this this to work, I'm I'm gonna pretend that these are my base values. All these figures are my base values. And what I want to do is pick all the line items I think will give me the most variability. So let's say you have maintainable capex. Maintainable capex seems good. I'm gonna put maintainable capex there. So let's say these are P and L. P and L um P and L sensitivities. Let's call these sensitivities, right? P and L sensitivities, yeah. I'm going to use uh, style, home. I'm going to put um, format who's heading to style just to make it look nicer. Uh, which other PNL can we pick? Let's say tax. Tax rate, no, dividend payout ratio. That's good. Dividend payout ratio, right? Right? So these, these are them. That's good. So these, this, this is fine. Then what else, what else, what else, what else would I do? Let's say... Um, Let's do balance sheets. So let's say some balance sheets. So I come here, I'm going to paste maybe some balance sheet sensitivities. Yes, balance sheets. So why am I calling it sensitivities? You're going to see that very soon. Balance sheet sensitivities. So let's pick which line items of our balance sheet should we play with a bit. Um, let's say share capital. So Share capital, ending balance. No, let's not play with that. Let's say inventory. So inventory is a percentage of cost of goods sold. What about if the inventory balance was a little bit larger than that? What will happen? Let's say whatever this inventory balance is, if we had 10% more inventory balance. So inventory, I think, is good. We can use inventory. Let's say inventory. Why don't we say all of them, right? Why not? Don't think we have time. Let's just pick a few. Let's say inventory and trade receivables. Let's do that. So inventory inventory balance trade receivables balance let's uh, pick um, what else should we pick let's pick trade payables and other payables and accruals why not so trade payables then other payables and accruals All right, 
So this is going to be our scenario section. So to build this out, these are um, we're not following these timelines up here. We're going to build it out in an interesting, interesting way. The technique I'm going to use is something I, I use really in a lot of my uh, financial models, the real life models that I build for clients. And what we're going to call it, I'm just going to put the headings here so you see you see what it is. I need to insert some rows here. So let me just insert some rows, let's say two rows. And we need to know we, what is our live scenario that we're using for our model. What's live? And then uh, what are we now picking? So what's my live set of scenarios? Um, I'll, I'll use this. Let me use these columns here. Yeah. So here I'm going to say, okay, I need to know what my um, live scenario, the units, the units here are just going to be percentages, okay? So they're going to be percentages, or let's say growth percentages, right? So, is, so here we're saying cost of sales. If cost of sales is uh, currently 54%, and if you look at uh, my PNL, cost of sales is going to go to PNL. In the PNL, we're going to say, hey, PNL says sales multiplied by that 50 something percent. But what I want to do with this sensitivity is say, whatever it is I have chosen as my, as my what's it called, um, this value for cost of sales, I want to grow it, increase it by maybe 5% or 3% or 4%. Do you get So whatever value I have here as my cost of sales, I'm going to increase it by 2% or grow it by 2% or grow it by 5% or reduce it by 2%. So it's a growth rate. So what, what I'm going to have... Is is like a growth. It's going to be a growth, growth. So it's going to be a growth rate, right? A growth rate that's going to be on top of whatever it is I have, including SGNA growth. It could be negative or positive. Your dividend payout ratio. Your dividend payout ratio. What I want to do here is I probably do a percentage, a completely different percentage, right? So I could I could do something that would overwrite this dividend payout, or I could just pay an additional dividend on top of that anyone I like. I could say it's a rate, which means that it's not going to use this rate, it's going to use the other rate. But but let's just say growth. Let's just keep it simple. So many options here. You will understand very soon. So growth, growth, growth. We'll come to um, balance sheet later. Let's let's use this for now. And then I'm going to come here and say, okay, what is the live scenario I'm using in my model right now? My live scenario. I need to know what my live scenario is. And then with my life scenario, I also need to do something I'm going to call an override. This is my life scenario. What am I? What's my life scenario I'm using? Because I, I'm, I'm going to also have under life scenario. Let me make this bigger. I have a life scenario. And I'm then going to also have something I call an override. Now let me take this to the left. Just let me give me some space. So I'm going to leave a space. I'm going to say I need an override. You see what override means very soon. And then after override, I then I can have another space just to make it neat. And I'm then going to have all my scenarios. I'm going to have my scenario one, scenario two, scenario three. So I'm just going to type one, two, three, four, five. So I can just type as many scenarios as I like. So these are my different sets of scenarios, right? Let's just put that there. So these are my different sets of scenarios. I'm just going to make them normal right different sets of scenarios uh, what what do i mean by these scenarios in fact i can give them a conditional format so you can see it's scenario one scenario two if i go to custom i'm going to just say scenario right this is for format i'm doing a format which will never change what's in a cell what's really in that cell is 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 a number so i'm just making it a format so you see scenario one what's still in this cell is one two three yeah i've just made it look like it's uh, scenario one scenario two and what I'm trying to do here is I want to be able to pick any of these scenarios and decide to say, do you know what? For this scenario one, my growth, whatever base value I had for cost of sales, right? Whatever base value I had for cost of sales, I want to grow it by 5%, for example, right? So to make this even better, I'm going to format this so that it's a percentage, right? And I want to know whether it's positive or negative. So I'm going to put a positive value at the front of this format, positive. And then I put a uh, underscore close bracket, just a format, and then a semicolon, and I put a square bracket, red square bracket, 
and a negative zero uh, percent, zero point zero zero percent. So this is just a format, right? And then if there is nothing there, if there is nothing there, I just put a semicolon and put a dash, right? So this is just a format. So I'm going to put five percent all through for now, all like this, five percent. Control R, Control D, right? And then I decide that, look, do you know what? In scenario one, whatever my base value assumptions, I'm going to add a five percent to it. And then I'm adding, a, I'm adding maybe four percent to whatever my SG&E um, value is in my financials. And then whatever my dividends values is in my financials, I'm adding twelve percent to it. Whatever the the dividend value comes to, I'm adding twelve percent to it. So this will be my scenario one. I could call this maybe the scenario that the MD said we should use. This is my MD scenario, right? In fact, I could even make this a little bigger to put a kind of a comment as to how did this scenario come about? Because it's important to know at what meeting we had that uh, they decided to run this scenario. So this was MD scenario at the board meeting, I guess, of, um, I don't know, wha what year? 21... March 2020 okay something like that all right so I'm going to wrap this I need to wrap this I'm going to go to home and wrap this right so we'll make it probably make it a smaller font right so guess what I haven't plugged anything to my model I'm still just planning right I'm still just planning things right now and by the time I plug it into my model you see how everything just works like like magic right so so this is MD scenario as at this. This is what scenario one is. Scenario one is MD scenario, right? Maybe I'll, I'm going to put a style under the scenario one. I'm just going to uh, underline it or something. Let me see if uh, I can see. I like formatting as I work, right? So it just looks neat and tidy. These are my scenarios. I can make this guy um, a little bit bold and maybe I even kind of drag this. Let me open this up. Uh, let's see, what style can I give this guy? Um, what style is nice? Check cell? Nah. Very good. Neutral. So, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't like any of the styles. <laughs> so I'll just put a border around it. I'll just control shift 7 and then this one also control shift 7. Right? And then control B. So if this, um, this is my scenario, let's say scenario 2 was... Um, uh, let me just copy. I'm going to do Control R for all of this, so it has the same style. And the delete, and then here I'll say this was best case, right? And then this was a uh, worst case or base yeah, worst case. Let's say worst case, yeah. And yeah, this was base case. Now, what do you think base case will be? Base case will obviously be zero. That means I'm not um, changing anything. If I put zero, it means I'm not changing anything. And we can leave this for future. The future, anybody in the future can decide to to use this, right? And and change the scenarios. So let's say we have all these. These are our scenarios, right? And uh, my best case scenario that cost cost will obviously be less. I'm going to say cost is minus two, minus two percent. And uh, SGA was also minus uh, three percent. And dividend payout. Maybe I'm a shareholder, so uh, say 10%. So I like to pay out dividends, right? So um, my worst case scenario is when cost of sales is probably like 10% more than we thought, right? And this is probably like 8% more than we thought. And dividends, they uh, you just couldn't pay dividends this year, right? So we're not we're, we're going to say dividend was minus 10% or whatever they were going to pay, right? So once you play with this. The question now is, okay, so what is entering our model right now? What's entering our model? So I'll do the technique for this. So what's override? Override, we're coming to override. Let's leave override for now. What is my live scenario? So these are my scenarios right now. Which one is my live uh, scenario? How, how do I pick my live scenario, right? How do I know which scenario is which? That, that's the question. So so let's 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 see. We're going to do a data validation. So I have to do I have to kind of pick uh, which one is my scenario at the moment, right? What's my scenario? And uh, let's see. So I'm just going to come here and my live scenario is going to be a drop down in here. I'll go to data. Data up here somewhere is data validation. Where are you data data validation? It's still hiding somewhere. Here we go. Data validation. 
And in my data validation, I'm picking a list, and my list is going to be all these scenarios here: scenario one, scenario two, scenario three, up to scenario whatever. You can you can take this all the way to scenario twenty. Doesn't matter. So if I click OK, and I pick scenario two, right? So scenario two, I'm just going to wrap it, just make it look nice, and maybe centralize it. And then of course I want to put that um, style that we had. You see that that custom style that we had for scenario. Remember, it's just a format, right? Click OK. So let's make some nice space. So see, so this is my active scenario. Let me make this an input. Let me make this an input. Input style. So if this is my active scenario, right? If this is my oh I didn't do that in the right place. I'm gonna cut this, cut this and bring it here. It's supposed to be my live scenario here, right? So this is my live scenario. So if I pick scenario one, what I want to see in here is the one I'm going to use in my model, which is I'm just going to say equals to index, right? So index, index, my list of scenarios here all the way to the end. These are my list of scenarios, right? So index, I'm saying, hey, index, looking at that list, right? Comma, what row do I want? Obviously, I'm in the same row, so I don't, it's just row one, same row. What column do I want? So the column I want is whatever column this scenario gives me. So this is scenario one, this is scenario two, this is scenario three. And remember, it's one in here, right? So I'm going to select this cell and lock it, F4, and then I close my bracket. What this will give me is this. So I can use this format here. I'm just going to paint brush this format and click it here, right? So this is my format. Now, if I change this to scenario two... See what it gives me? That is this figure. If I change it to scenario 3, that's this figure. So this is what is going to run in my model, this, right? So I can just drag this down, right? And this basically is how I pick what enters into my model, right? Scenario 4, right now scenario 5, there's nothing for scenario 5. There's scenario 1, right? Scenario 1 being the best case, base case, and all that kind of stuff, right? Right. So, in fact, you can even come here and put what is exactly, what's the meaning of scenario one, so that people know, okay, which scenario are we using? You, you could do that. I could do that here, right? So I could I could insert a row here, um, click on this, and say clear formatting. And then um, let me also remove control R. So I could I come here, and just so that I know the name of what scenario is being run right now, I'd say it's called the index, right, index, same thing, index. I highlight this, all these names, right? And I put a comma. And what row do I want? No row, one, first row, and then whatever this scenario is up here. F4, close my bracket, enter, and this gives me the name of what scenario I'm running. I'm going to use this format, right? I'm going to use this format and clean this up, right? So this is the scenario I'm running. If I click this, scenario four, base case, three. Right, now, how do I plug this into my model? But before we do that, let's quickly do for balance sheet. So the balance sheet figures, what are we trying to do? Here we're saying that whatever it is in our PNL, we are going to kind of grow it by 5%, grow it by 12 Remember, I have scenarios already in the old school way. This is the scenarios for uh, just sales. Now, this one already has scenarios for three. I can build this to have scenarios for every line item I like. It's a really wonderful tool. But sometimes, right, when I do scenario one, my MD could say, you know what? I like these scenarios, but can we just do one with this at 4%? I don't want to change this because that's what we did on the 21st of March 2020. But I would like to use all my scenarios in scenario one, except for just this one that I want at 4%. And I don't want to create a whole new set of scenarios. That's where override comes in. So override, we're saying in override, that hey, override, whatever I put in here is going to override what is here, regardless of what whatever we said in my scenario analysis tool. So what we say with override is, okay, uh, let me copy this. Just put some figures here and delete. So if, if I say well, 2%, that means, hey, I want to override whatever this was supposed to be. I'm going to override it with 2%. And if I delete 2%, it will go back to what it's supposed to be. Do you get that? So this overrides whatever it is I've picked. Remember, these things are controlled by this, right? If I do scenario 2, it controls it. But I want this to override it, right? This, this is a value here. It overrides it. How do we do that? So I'm going to leave this value here. And here we're going to modify this formula. So we're just going to modify it. We're going to put in the beginning, we're just going to say an if. If, for example, 
if this cell is not blank right if this cell is not blank right or if this cell is blank we'll we'll pick this but if it's not blank we'll we'll pick whatever is there so and see it's just like english right so here i'm going to say if right is blank right there's a function called is blank if is blank this cell right so if this cell which is hiding here if that cell is blank so look at that if is blank right then a comma so if if that cell is blank obviously it means i don't want to override if it's blank then give me the formula that i already have but at the end if not put a comma if not then give me that cell and close my bracket and we enter right so when i delete it and it's blank it doesn't override but when i have something in there it overrides that's how override works perfect right it's blank no override there's value it overrides regardless of what you do here override will always take precedence right why do we need that it's just flexibility so that's override so i'm going to drag this formula all the way down and now we have a tool that just works perfectly so this is my growth now what about your inventory so how do we plug inventory trade receivables same thing just basically the same thing here we're basically saying if you check uh, calculations for inventory for example if i come down to calculations for inventory whatever these inventory figures are right whatever these fi inventory figures are we probably we're going to grow them by a certain percent or reduce them by a certain percent same thing right same thing so what do i do i just come back to my input sheet and I'm just going to use the same thing. So I'm just going to copy all of this so that we don't waste time. Yeah, just going to copy all of these guys, right? Copy and paste it here. So all of it is going to be like growth. I'm going to highlight Ctrl D, and then so all the formulas work. And I'm going to change this to let's say uh, MB scenario is inventory will go four percent, two percent for this uh, trade payables. We grow by three percent and this will also grow by two percent and the best case is that inventory will be s just flat same as base it, my trade receivables will actually go down so i'm going to do minus minus uh, five percent and people are not so hopefully my trade receivables are reducing trade payables i'm going to also reduce my payables i'm going to say it's minus uh, five percent and then i'm going to say my other payables and accruals is going to be plus five percent and then my worst case scenario is when inventory actually goes up by 12%. Jeez, that's terrible. Trade receivables goes up by 10%. And trade payables, uh, maybe leave it flat. Mm, trade payables, no, let's say trade payables goes up by like 6%. And then uh, other payables and receivables uh, goes up by 5%. So can you see, there's so much variability here. If I change this to scenario 2... You can see that everything is now running scenario two, except for an override. This 3% is here, this 10% is there, this 5% is there, except for an override. If I delete the override, everything now runs scenario two perfectly. So once there's an override, it's scenario two plus override. Okay, enough of all this. How do we plug this now into our model? Right? How do we plug it? For override, let me make this input. So everyone knows that, hey, they can put overrides as they like as an input as well. It's always important to use styles and, and make sure you use styles very properly. Put your styles there at all times, right? Right. So this is a tool. This is far more powerful than this, all right? This is even more tedious, but this is so much more powerful. So what I could do for this, instead of this drop down, actually, I could actually use a combo box so we can pick what scenario, MD scenario, or whatever, right? So let's say all these names of this scenario, we could actually create a combo for it. Right? We could do that now. Let me quickly do that. Why not? So we do the developer. We go to insert. We go to combo box. We draw the combo box. We right click it. We do format control. But the issue is this. I should have named this, right? I should have named it. But let's do the bad practice first. We highlight this. We create a cell link. If I click on this as the cell link and say, okay, let's just see if this works. If I click on this drop down, it doesn't work. Because unfortunately, you need a list this way. You can't have a list this way and it works. 
So you need a list that is down this way. So we need to do a transpose of this somewhere and all sorts of stuff before this combo box works. Ah, lots of work. Yeah. But yeah, that's what modelers go through, right? Modelers need to be able to build all this stuff. So what I would have done is I would have come here and said, hey, go to maybe one input sheet or something or a menu sheet or go somewhere somewhere in my model, come in here. I know there were like six of these values, right? Or is it six? How many scenarios did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to say equals to transpose, right? Equals to transpose. I come to inputs and then I highlight these. Was it six? Oh, I thought it was five. Is it six? Oh, it's not going to work. But anyway, I'll for F4, close my bracket and do control shift enter because it's transpose. Or is it six? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Oh, good. I did six. So, Ctrl Shift Enter. And this is my list. This is my scenario list. I'm going to do Ctrl Shift 7. And then I'm going to call this my scenarios. Right? And this is my scenarios. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to call it. Uh, I'm going to call it L Mega. Mega Scenarios. Scenario or something. Mega Scenario. Right? A Mega Scenario. I'm going to make this cell my switch. You know, I said you need a list and a switch. S mega scenario mega scenario and enter and this is my switch let me just make it an input 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 that's there and now that I have a list and I have a switch that's in the format that this can work I'll come to developer come to my insert click on my combo box draw my combo box right click my combo box go to format control then go to input range then I say what? Oh, I hope I remember the name. L underscore mega scenario. I hope mega scenario. I hope I got that right. And then I hope I spelled the other one right. S underscore. You need to make sure the spelling is exactly the same. Mega scenario. Enter. If I click out and click this, I see this and everything should work. Let me make this uh, that. So you see, uh, base case. But now these ones are zero and zero, right? So it's not going to know which one I picked. Mm, it does for some strange reason. Wow. So I knew I picked it. Oh yeah, of course the second on the list and the whatever on the list. So this is my list of scenarios, and this is this is the MD uh, scenario. It's quite a long thing. MD did something something something, <laughs> right? So I can right click, copy this, come to my input sheet, and I can now paste this maybe here or something, right? So I paste it here, and this is now my scenario picker. Yeah, I can delete this one. So now, when 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 what we can do is that your L scenario. This is actually what it would be. So this cell should really not be the one controlling one two threes. It should be equal to S mega scenario. That's the trick. So S mega scenario. This is no more an a uh, drop down. I'm now using this. When I click this, it's coming in here. Scenario two. If I click this, it's scenario three. So let's even call this a uh, blank scenario. Let's say blank one and blank two, right? Blank two, right? So now if I come here, I should see blank one and blank two, right? See blank one and which is scenario five and blank two. So this still works fine. It's just that I it's, it has an input. It's no more an input. So I'm just going to come here, paint brush, and paint on the, over this, and then maybe come back and just make it look like scenario two, so that it's still happy and nice. So it's scenario one, scenario two. Oh, I didn't want the data validation, so I'm just going to go to data, data validation, and data, and clear my validation, so it doesn't have the validation anymore. And I just centralize this. All this housekeeping stuff, right? So I, I can now pick this scenario. Now, how do I plug all this into my model? That's the final step. Final step is how do I plug all these wonderful things into my model? So I have these things. And it, this can be a very huge table. And this will build so much flexibility into your model is untrue. Imagine doing a sensitivity of this cell. That's a different story. Maybe another video. So where I'll see all these scenarios all in one. And this, this MD scenario has changed different variables. This changes different variables. But anyway, how do you plug it in? 
Remember override works? If I type one percent here, it overrides this. Can you see that? Right? So plugging it in. Cost of sales. Best pay way to plug it in, you go to your PL and you st designate a cell here. You designate one of these cells here as your sensitivity cell. Okay? So I'm going to designate maybe this. I'm going to call this sense. Sense. I'm just going to call this column sense. My column G is going to be my sense column. So here is my sense. All I do is equals to in this my sense and go to my input. Oh no, we didn't do any revenue, did we? We started with cost of sales. Equals to my sense is equal to this cost of sales, right? And this is my sense, right? And I'm going to keep my sense. I'm going to use the same formatting that plus and minus formatting. I think it's nicer and neater. So this is my sense. I'm going to make it a linked cell style because it's a linked cell. So a linked cell formatting style. Where are we? Somewhere here, linked cell. Kind of an ugly format, actually, linked cell. But this is it. This is my sense. Now, this sense, I just got to copy. And it's going to have another sense here, but I'll do the link. It's going to be equal to, where are we? Uh, input. My second sense is for this. This is the SGNA sensitivity, right? Then I copy this one. I think we did for what else did we do? Sense for I think that was that dividends. So, dividends, it was the next one. The next sense is for dividend payout. Where's dividend in my calculation sheet? So, I come to dividends here. And for dividends, where are we? Dividends ending changing. So, dividends is my ending balance sense. So, uh, whatever the dividends is, this figure is we're going to do a sense here. I said we're going to use column G for sense. So I'm going to call this sense, which is sensitivity, and sense, 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 sense. So dividends here, obviously you could have had sensitivities for nearly all of them. So I'm just going to say equals to, and I'm going to come to input and pick this here. So whatever the dividends is, oh no, this is not dividends. What am I doing? This dividend payable. Ah, dividends is up here somewhere. Yeah, this dividends. So dividend cents, whatever dividends we're paying now, we're going to increase it by what? Uh, where is it? Dividends this. So you, you get it. I'm sure you get it by now, right? So this, again, let me just make a format. Let's say custom format, this one with percentage. I'm just going to put a border around it. And let's see, what's that? Okay, 10, Ctrl Shift 7. This is my cents, right? How do I plug it in? All you do is come in here. Go to this formula, open your bracket, so close whatever is there, multiply it by open another bracket, 1 plus this growth rate. It's a growth rate. F4 for this, right? To lock it, close it, enter, or you should have, and then you control R all the way there. When you control R, you check your balance sheet. Everything still balance is fine, right? And that's how you've plugged this in. How do we plug those PLs in the same way? I come to this formula here. Whatever that formula is there, right? Whatever it is, you can just put a bracket around it just to be sure you're happy with the analysis. And you multiply it by 1 plus this sense, this sensitivity. Lock it, F4, close your bracket, enter, drag it right, Control R. Same thing for this one. You come to this formula here, you kind of open your bracket, you close your bracket, you multiply it, open your bracket, 1 plus this figure here, you lock it, you close your bracket, and you've now plugged that sensitivity into your model. So you can imagine doing this for every single row. It's so powerful. So, so powerful. How many have we done? I think we did, uh, how many? We did three now. We just did those three. So you, you do these ones as well. You just do that, plug it the same way, and once you plug it, now if I click on this, worst case, now if I take this, let me make a copy of this so you can see the effect. If I come to my p &L now, right, I even go to my balance sheet. I'm going to drop this in my balance sheet, just paste. So you're going to say, okay, in the worst case scenario, this is my, this is my combo box for all my other variables, right? Click on this. MD scenario. This is what happens. Uh, best case scenario, this is what happens. Base case scenario, this is what happens. So you can see this is far more superior than building what we did the other time. You know, we built this one. This is typically what you see everywhere, right? This is the typical scenario. 
this one is so much more powerful this so this is the mega sensitivity and scenario analysis i've done a model with this this is about 100 rows of this right and that is the big 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 uh, every could have two hours four hours five hours meetings on this and they say hey, no let's override let's just override this i need to override oh we're using no let's not use blank let's use worst case and in the worst case let's just say this is not as bad as we thought this this uh cost of sales was actually just went up by three percent everything your model has changed because check go to piano now it's three percent is growing by right because there's an override and that is it so quite a lot quite a long winded thing right i mean that was mega it, yeah that's why we call it a mega scenario analysis tool so thanks everybody for watching another webinar from d brown consulting this is our financial modeling webinar series and sorry i couldn't really interact with you in the webinar so much to talk about on this but please type in the chat type in the chat and uh, tell us what you think about this webinar it was a bit technical i know we're going to launch it's going to hopefully be on the youtube channel very soon and you can watch it and then learn a lot out of it this is your mega scenario analysis tool so mastering scenario analysis for financial modeling this is a webinar by d brown consulting every third thursday of the month we do this i hope you enjoyed it i'm david brown and i'll see you guys next month thank you very much bye bye